Hello and welcome to the Distinctive Dummies channel. In this video, we're going to make a lithophane lampshade, like the one we have here. A couple of months ago, I made this one, featuring the characters from the Distinctive Dummies Originals line, designed by myself, Ron Gearing, and Pablo Valenzuela. As you can see, we have Nosferatu, the Night Porker, the Distinctive Dummies logo, and the Peace de Resistance Zombie Martin. A good friend of mine, Glenn, at Horror Homes in America, asked if I could make him one featuring his company logo. So obviously I agreed, and that's what we're going to do today. The program we're going to use is to design it is called It's Lotho. There are a few lithophane makers available on the internet, but I find It's Lotho the easiest one to use with its interface. And obviously then we're going to slice it all up in Cura and print it out. So from here, let's go to the computer and get creating. Here we are in the It's Lido homepage. I'm not sure about the sound on this because I'm using my computer microphone. So fingers crossed it's the best. So first thing we do is we could go up here and click Get Started. And this bring us, brings us to the interface. Okay, on the side, we have all our options of how we're going to make the lampshade. Then we have edit, where we can edit the photos we upload. And then we have the upload button. Glenn has given me his logo image, which I will upload twice. And hopefully then it will cover the whole of the lamp. So first we'll, thing we'll do is we'll upload the images. Okay, what and two. I'm using PNG files because I've removed the background, but JPEGs work just as well. Okay, I don't think we need to edit any of the photos, so we'll go straight to my model. Okay. So it defaults at a frame option. So the first thing we need to do is we need to ch click where it says shape and it gives us a list of all the things we can do. So for us, we will go to cylinder and click cylinder. And it gives us that. So the first thing we need to do is set the actual size of the lamp. And we will start with the height. The height he wants is 210 millimeters. So using the slider till we get closer to 210. Just zoom out using the mouse button. And then we use the up and down arrows to get it exactly where we want. Okay, that gives us the height. Then we want the diameter. We have top and bottom. He wants this in the uniform size at 215 millimeters. So again, we'll start with the bottom and we'll get close. Then just use a to find adjust and the same with the top. Okay, and there we have the size of the lampshade. For frame option, we have none. Border. Or frame itself, which we will use frame, which gives us the nice edging around the top and bottom. 
Okay. Frame thickness, we will use the defaults, which is thickness 3mm, depth 4mm, at an angle of 45 degrees. Okay, then we have quality options. We'll leave that for now and we'll come back to that. Then we go to attributes, where it says enable lamp. So we'll click that one and that gives us our inside pieces. Our frame and our lamp bulb holder. So the Z offset would move these frames up and down. Obviously for this we'll keep them on the bottom so we don't need to use any support so we'll leave that as is then we go to the bulb fitter which is obviously the round circle in the middle the size for that we need is the diameter is 32 millimeters so again we'll get close then we'll just use the up and down arrows to make it precise thickness two millimeters i think worked fine on my last one the height i will knock down a little bit to 15 millimeters and that's the bulb holder set the connectors are these struts that go along here here we can change the amount, how many we use, their height and their width or thickness. The angle is set at naught, which is perfect. So the amount, we'll change that down to three. Height, we'll change that to eight. And width, We'll change that to four millimeters. Okay. That's looking good so far. Okay, then we come to model options, which is the lighting part. Uh, the light color, I believe, will we use a white light. So we'll leave that as 95%. And the material color. I'll be using, as I said earlier, Eason PLA plus Cool White. So we'll leave that as is. Then we'll go to the image options. All, I'll leave all of these the same. And this one's on a positive image where the picture, like the lamp I showed you earlier, will protrude out. So we'll leave that at positive for now. And then we'll go back up to quality options. As you can see at 0.1 millimeters, the estimated file size is 600 megabytes, 607 megabytes, which will make it very difficult for Cura to slice. So what we will do is we will change that to 0.2. Okay, that should change to a nice file size of 152 megabytes. So all we have to do now is give it a final look around. And that looks good and hit the download button. This screen will pop up and then we have choices download lithophane lithophane only attributes or color lithophane we choose lithophane okay that's downloaded what 
I want to do though is I want to go back. I want to change just change the top and bottom to 210. So this one fits comfortably on me Ender 3. And I want to try one with a negative image. Just go back up to check. Yes, the, the file is a size. I'm interested to see how it will print like this. So we'll hit download again. Hit download lithophane. And now we are ready to put those into Cura to slice and to print. So I will see you in Cura. We're here in Cura, so the first thing we will do is we will import the file. Okay, because Cura likes to put the seam at the back, or that's how I've got it set up, I'm going to just rotate this. I think it's 45 degrees, so we have the seam running through the space and not the picture. Okay. Now, I'm in standard quality, but we do need to make a few changes before printing. First, we will go to walls. Where it says wall line count, we will change that to 99. Then we will move down to infill and change that to zero. Speed, we will move down and change to 40, but we will up the wall line speed to 30. And that is pretty much set up for the way I like it. So we will hit the slice button. Everybody has their own ways of setting up for lithophane. This is the way I've done it before in the past and it seems to work okay. Some people like to use less walls and infill. But I find we can print a little bit quicker in this method. Okay, it can take a bit of time to slice because it's quite a big file. Okay, one day, 10 hours and 46 minutes with 250 grams of filament. I will insert the removable drive. And I will save the file. Okay. Next, I will delete the lampshade and I will return my settings back to normal. The quickest way I find to do it is just to hit again on standard quality, discard changes and then just go back in and, ch and change my temperatures back to the way I like them, which is 210 and 60. 
Okay, so now we will change to the Ender 3 V2. Again, we are still in standard quality and we will import the test file. The one I'm experimenting with with a negative lithophane. Okay, for, so we will do that again. We will change the wall count to 99. Infill to 0. Speed to 40. For the, as this is an experimental one, I'm going to up the wall speed to 40 as well and see what happens. If it's successful, Glenn at Horror Homes will get two lampshades. Okay, we are ready to slice. I did notice when I was playing earlier that negative lithophane seemed to take more material and time to print than positive. I'm not sure I can fathom that one out. If somebody knows, please leave me a description in the comment below. Okay, one day, 15 hours and 57 minutes with 383 grams of filament. And this one is slightly smaller than the original one. Okay, oh no. I actually need to rotate that. Okay, we will slice again. Everybody makes mistakes, it seems. Okay, one day, 16 hours and 12 minutes. Oh no, are we having a computer glitch? Okay, all done. Eject. Delete. Discard. And then just put my bed and filament temperatures back to the way I like them. Okay. 
Okay, so what we're going to do now is we'll load up some filament in the machines, stick the cards in, set print, and I'll be back in about two days. So here we are with the finished lamps. This is the larger one printed on my Creality CR10 Smart Pro, and this is the one we did with the positive image. This is a smaller one that we printed on the Ender 3 V2 with the negative image. Because of the difference in ball boulder size, they won't fit on my original lamp. So I'll bring them both up with a 6 volt LED light bulb. So we will switch these on. And we will have a look and see what the difference is. Okay, let's start first with the bigger version. Okay, as you can see, because this is a positive image, it focuses more on the design. And lets a lot of light through the actual lampshade itself. The one with the negative image is much, much darker with only the lightest parts of the design showing through. I think from a functional point of view that if you wanted to display one in your living room, in one of your child's bedroom, then this one, the bigger one with the positive Im image would be better. You could put family photos on there, Maybe some Marvel superheroes, maybe even some movie monsters, depending on your child's age or your own inclinations. The little one, I think, would be great on top of a cabinet somewhere next to a display just to add a bit of ambience, more for aesthetic use than functional. I think It's Lie, though, has done a really great job in designing these lamps. And hopefully I shall make some more soon. I'm sure Glenn will be very happy when I send these to him this week. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you wish to see more content like this, then please hit the subscribe button and that notification bell. We do appreciate you watching and thank you very much for watching the Distinctive Dummies channel and we will see you again soon.